I, was, I, was, I say almost every day, like, when I finally, when I finally go back home, back east, yeah. people are going to think I'm lying, like, making up stories about yeah. some of the things that happened here. Where's back east for you? Washington, D.C. Did you see? That's why they call me D.C. Oh, okay. Yeah, my kids actually live in Virginia. But, um, yeah, it's crazy. It man. never ceases to, man. Like, I've been here seven years, and there's still shit that can happen on a, on a daily basis that you just couldn't make it. You couldn't make up. Yeah. D.C., so, so you're living on the street? Yeah. Two, long, two blocks over. Actually. How long have you been on the street? You got 10? Yeah. yeah. I got three of them. Three of them? Yeah. yeah. Actually, today's our street cleaning day. Oh, so you pack it up. Oh, yeah. Every two weeks we have this. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, so what are you doing to make money? I sell pallets. You sell pallets? Yeah. You're resourceful. That's something different. Yeah. And see, because there's, uh, there's a endless supply of them. You know, it, it just, it's, you just have to think of where to go and when to go there. And after a while, certain people will remember you, certain people will like you, certain people will don't like you. You just have to find a way around things yeah. to get the pallets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then who do you sell them to? The pallet yards. There's one, the main one's here on series, um, right up the street from where I live. And you got to carry the pallet over down? Yeah, on a basket, a person on a basket, or, um, or a pallet jack or something Keeps like that. Keeps in good shape? Yeah, it does, actually. Yeah, because you'd be surprised um, how Cardiovascular. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're yeah. in good shape. Yeah. Yeah. Because of that. Yeah, whenever I take a, like a break or some time off, and then I try to do it again, uh, I get surprised at how winded I get, tired. <laughs> you do it how many breaks I have to take? Damn, I, I do this shit every day. But yeah, you're right. So are you are you using currently? Yeah. What are you using? <laughs> um. Well. I smoke weed every day. I smoke weed every day for most of my life. Uh, cocaine. Every once in a while, I have a crystal meth. I don't really like it. Uh, and sometimes PCP. And what's, what's, the, what's the difference? Doing, have, you, have you tried heroin too? No. You haven't tried I refuse. Seconds. I can't. I, so what's, what's there's the difference? too much dependency on that one. And, you know, yeah. They have to have it. Um, but what's, what's the difference? Okay. If somebody's going to take. Uh, is it crack you know? Yeah, and powder. And powder. Yeah. There's, there's a, um, the, only, the difference between crack and powder is just the, uh, the urgency of the rush, which is, is it's the same rush, it's, but it's the urgency of the rush. With uh, crack, it's faster? Much more, much, much more potent, and leaves much, much more faster. Like much, there's um, more urgency, so then, and then I get, and then it's like over. <laughs> so then it creates uh, uh, another urgency to, to keep it going. You need more. Yeah. yeah. It's, and PCP, tell me about that. Oh, man. See, I used to smoke that a lot when I was younger, too. But in DC, we call it Love Boat, Angel Dust, basically. Um, over here, it's funny because, like, this, this is where they were getting it, in LA. It's like LA DC pipeline. Yeah. So, um, I stopped for a long time. I didn't really. What does that do for you, though? As opposed to cocaine? It, 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 fucking, it kills your motor skills. <laughs> <laughs> um, What's the upside? I don't, I don't really see one. I don't, yeah. I don't remember why I was smoking. And, and crystal meth? Something about that? Nothing. Just nothing. It's, it's, like, it's like Tylenol. Yeah, it's false energy. You know? You're tired and you don't know it. Mm -hmm. You're a zombie. Yeah. Uh, at least with cocaine, like, okay, if you go. Say another 30 minutes or an hour without any, and your, your your body catches up. Like you're, you're just shutting down. Like crystal meth doesn't work that way. You have to be like knocked out or something. What, what's the most popular drug on the street here? Heroin? No, crack. Crack. But crystal meth is catching up yeah. rapidly mm -hmm. because some people consider it um, like a graduation because they don't have to spend as much money. And, uh, but it's it's a false. See, it's, I I um I compare it to Tylenol. And Tylenol doesn't really kill pain or stop pain. It tricks your brain and it's saying it's no pain. Some people that doesn't work. I think crystal meth the same way. It tricks your brain into thinking you're getting a 
class this year. Tell me where your childhood is. I'm sure I talked to you about it before. Um, not really. I didn't open up at all like that. No? Uh, I rarely do. I grew up in Chicago. Um, uh, That's where I'm from, too, but I think yeah. I was in a different neighborhood. Probably so. <laughs> Were you born in Cook County Hospital, too? No, yeah, I wasn't. Oh, yeah. You might have been from like Neighborville oh, or some uh, shit. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Evanston and Skokie. <laughs> anyway, yeah, um, yeah, I grew up in Chicago until I was 10 years old. Um, my mom, um, she had me 11 months after she had my sister. We had different dads when she was in college. But she had like, um, she had tendencies to uh, run the streets and, and do do wild stuff. Like, I remember she used to take us to bars and racetracks. At what age? Four, five, three, four, four five, yeah. Right. yeah. And, and uh, um, pool halls, racetracks, shit like that. Um, How old was your mom? At that time? Uh, at the time? Yeah, 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 yeah mid 20s probably. Mm -hmm. and, um, she got in trouble and we had to go to foster care. Me and my sister and my little brother. You say your mom got in trouble. She got put in prison? Yeah. For what? Um, she still won't let me know completely, but um, somebody died. <laughs> like that, yeah. But um, she ended up uh, being able to get us back. She got out. She got us back. She was a born again Christian after that. You know? yeah. yeah. But I still remember her, uh, you know, who she is. Going to Christian stuff. Anyway, she got a job transfer when I was 10 years old to uh, Washington, D.C. She thought it was better because, see, in the building, the project building I lived in was a gangster disciple control building. And they started, um, you know, they, they recruit like, like boys at a certain age. And they see certain. They saw certain things in me that they wanted to use. So the like, disciples wanted you. Yeah, and they were, they were, they were teaching me and shit, like good shit. And she saw it. She didn't like it. She did. She figured um, I just had to get away. Uh, ironically, we moved to DC. DC was no better. That's when uh, it was really, really, really cracked out. I mean, Marion Barry was the American. Disciples was Chicago or DC? Yeah, that was Chicago. No, was we Chicago. moved to DC to get away from that. Yeah, DC was no better. <laughs> we didn't know it. There's gangs there. No, it's no, it just, it just utter poverty. Not so much gangs, it's just poverty, poverty. Especially then, it's when uh, Marion Barry. Remember when? He, yeah. That was the same year, 1991. Yeah. Um, she wanted us to go to better schools. After like maybe like two years. She had, we moved to Virginia, you know, Northern Virginia suburbs of DC. She thought it'd be better life, better schools. And, and then that's where the irony comes in. That's where I, I got in all, all the trouble in the world. Oh, really? yeah. What kind of trouble? Um, when I was 13, um, I got my first, when I was 13, it was the first time I smoked weed, first time I drank, first time I had sex, first time I, I bust a gun, first time I drove a car, first, my first felony, my first charge period, first gun charge, all that shit happened when I was 13, this wow. year I turned 13. Yeah, and so, I was a convicted felon, actually, before I ever had sex. <laughs> How much prison time did you get? In my life? Yeah. yeah I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> How many you a lot. Like, what, what have you been in prison for? A lot. <laughs> Prison or jail? Either one. Yeah. Mostly just not doing what they say. Mostly. Not, I never really done anything like so heinous that you have to be locked away. Yeah. Like, it's mostly, okay, you're on probation, you have these rules. And you're just not following. You're gonna follow these rules. We'll give you one more chance. You're, you're disrespecting the judge. Uh, so, so I'm sorry, <laughs> A problem with authority, I guess. Yeah. Um, How old are you now? I'll be 38, 38. in two months. Where would you like to see yourself in five years? I have my kids with a story to tell that, that will help somebody else not do this. <laughs> that's, that's, well, I'd like to be in five years. That's 
swear I will be in five years. And inspiration to people. If, if we can overcome this, you can overcome anything. And I know I will overcome this. This is the bottom, man. Yeah. This is the this, bottom. This is the hardest way of life. I mean, there is, it's, it's funny because you would think in America, there's no, people wouldn't have to live like this. And most of America has no clue. And it's really systematic. Only thing is, noticing it, seeing it doesn't really help you to not do it. I'm very pacified living on the street where you don't have to pay rent, you don't have to pay any bills. I mean, the weather permits it. They bring you food, they bring you clothes. What else? I mean, what? any money you get, you, know, you just throw right away on drugs. Yeah. And it's all right because we'll feed you. We'll clothe you. <laughs> you can live here for free. Yeah. There's nowhere else like this anywhere. And you can't live on a sidewalk. <laughs> even if you even in the summertime, hurry up and say get your ass off the sidewalk.